me explain. Devil May Cry, in my opinion, is uh, the greatest action game series ever made of all time. I can personally attest to that series being the primary reason why I go out of my way to learn games as best as I can, why so many people in my experience have said I am so incredibly skilled at particular kinds of games, and why I always try to go outside of the box when playing them. And so, this video essay series, because it was going to be one giant video that I typed scrap and cut into parts, is going to be mostly talking about how the series as a whole helped me be universally better at games. And don't expect more than four parts. I'm just letting you know that right now. But do expect each part to be at least like I don't know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Either way, I got a lot to say. I got a lot of love for the series. It's not going to be a retrospective. And I will be talking about other games. And I will touch on the story here and there. But it's mostly going to be focused on the gameplay and how it rewards you and encourages you to go outside of the box and do really cool and really neat things. And no, I will not be talking about that dog shit, gotcha, peak of power, peak of combat, whatever, because I was really excited for that and I was very let down by it. For the warning, for a future part, or whenever I get to it, I don't like the reboot. <laughs> Allow me to take you back to a time where it was me, my cousins, at our uncle's house with the PS2, the original release of Devil May Cry 3, and how they kept dying over and over and over. And I said, oh, hey, I want to play. And just as a heads up, for the duration of the, what I'm going to call, memory recollection point of this part of the video series the footage that you will see is my genuine best attempt at trying to recreate the way that i played the game when i was eight years old and it's not going to look the greatest it's bad on purpose for a reason so anyway check this out right me my cousins many years ago at my uncle's house were all crowded around the TV. Well, they are, really. I was playing Sonic Advance 2 on my Game Boy. They were playing the original release of Devil May Cry 3. They are getting their shit pushed in. And eventually they start arguing and complaining. And I don't remember exactly what was said. But at some point they go, well, at least I'm playing better than you. At that point I'm like, oh, well, what are you guys playing? Let me play. We follow the pass the stick rules. Pass the stick being, you lose, the controller goes to the next person. Cousin 1 plays uh, Mission 2 again, dies. Cousin 2 plays Mission 2, dies. Cousin 3 plays Mission 3, dies. You see the pattern here, right? I get the controller. It's my turn. I don't know what I'm doing. I get to the Hell Vanguard fight of Mission 2, and because this is my, like, first time actually seeing, like, demons, and devils in a game and shit this thing comes up i'm like scared as hell there's fear in my heart and in my hands so what i do run and shoot man jumping and shoot and slide and shoot i turn the game into mega man and eventually it dies and i get to mission three mission three goes well we get to service now because i 
did not perceive the giant demon dog as a threat because it was a dog to me. Uh, I fought it. Took a while. But I eventually beat it. And uh, everything was all good and cool until I got to mission 7 where I realized that I can't brute force the goddamn game anymore. Oh, this is what they call a heartwarming family reunion. Virgil quite literally beat the dog water out of me and uh, this suddenly became the hardest game I've ever played in my entire life by proxy for my cousin since you know pass the stick rule every time I kicked the bucket had to pass it along and the control just kept going in rotation and rotation and rotation for like a solid like hour I just want to win I sat down when I got the controller again and we locked in, baby. Unwavering focus, unwavering concentration, unwavering determination. So once I saw the fade to black screen after trying for that fight so many times, I felt like I was on top of the world, you know, I thought I was him, I thought I was the coolest kid on the block, I was so happy, and then and I was like really confused about it, but again, a kid 
didn't really get storytelling and all that. So then I go through the rest of the game with honestly relatively no problem. Like I didn't struggle on Virgil 2 as like most people tend to do. And then I beat, you know, the rest of the bosses, yada, 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 having a great time. I did not have to pass a stick back to my cousins until I got to mission 19. Mission 19 was the return of the stick rotation. And when I first got to it, it was really, really, really cool because at this point, it's very obvious that I'm at like the end of the game and whatever, whatever. And I'm fighting old nasty, ugly looking Arkham and blah, 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 beating his teeth in, you know, it's cool. The vibes are right. I didn't really understand the ads thing that kind of like freaked me out when he would go away and then spawn his little things all over the place confuse me freak me out and whatever but then you get down to the halfway mark and i'm like oh did i win no to retrieve my power. You can't handle it. <laughs> Look at you, making a big dramatic entrance and stealing my spotlight. What? <laughs> you don't possibly believe that he deserves to be our main event now, do you? Now that you mention it, you're right. You should come to realize you cannot control the power of Sparta. You're wasting your time, buddy. I think you need to learn the hard way. There's a phase two, and the phase two is like really cool because it's like oh i get to control two characters at one time this is awesome you can't use devil trigger oh shit and then the part where it's like car virgil to your side with the circle button i'm like that's cool you can't use your style attacks oh shit the problem once again i have to readjust how i play the game for this one fight and if you die which happened a lot you got to redo the boss fight from part one over and over and over again which honestly was getting to the point of like infuriating and i really felt like you know deep down inside and for like the first time ever i damn near launched the controller at the tv when i lost for a what had to be like the 10th time when i got the controller they take away the defining tool of the game and i'm like oh my god i hate this 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 shut up my soul is screaming demanding me to kill him can i just win please and virgil one the cycle of virgil one started to repeat all over again eventually beat it Jackpot. 
Not very classy for someone's dying words. And then the nightmare of Virgil 3 kicked in, and uh... The death count started to go up a lot again in a very short amount of time and it had gotten to the point where my cousins didn't even want to pass the stick anymore because I had pretty much carried us to the end of the game and they like I mentioned earlier really only got to play again around mission 19 so me just throwing them or rather them not wanting to be thrown into the Virgil Den. I just kind of have to deal with it over and over and over again. But, you know, I started getting a couple hits here and there and me thinking, oh, maybe the 10 hit rule applies. It didn't. It did not. He could just parry whenever. He could just transform whenever. And um, it was rough. It was real rough, real bad, real tough. I'm out here struggling, fighting for my soul is screaming for my life. And whenever I start to make like a little bit of leeway, Virgil be like, no, you can't do that. I'm not letting you do that, big dog. And then again, you know, blah blah blah, playing on the original release, the hard mode. I'm like losing a lot of health very fast. And I had gone the majority of the game not really using items but at that point you know tiny tiny for Shia pride was like i'm not going to do that i'm not going to do that loss after loss after loss after loss and i couldn't even say that i started to lock in because i was mad i was really really mad i just went through the nightmare of dying to arkham over and over and over and over not getting past mission 19 getting extra dosage of anger because i can't beat virgil again i genuinely had to pause the game and like walk away from the tv for a few minutes and then when i sat back down i mind you like 30 or so minutes had gone by but i sat back down picked up the controller and started going at it a few more good times and then then finally the anger subsided the irritation went away and i started to kind of sort of notice granted i was still like swinging willy-nilly and not caring too much about the mechanics but i was just like okay i can hit him here i can hit him there i can hit him at least three times before he says the not anymore button and parries me and before long I say this knowing that it was about at least 10 more deaths uh, before long. I finally, finally beat him. Am I being defeated? What's wrong? Is that all you got? Come on, get up. You can do better than that. closing Dante because the amulets have been separated let's finish this version I have to stop you even if that means killing you
And then after that, I was really caught off guard by the fact that I was able to continue playing the game when the credits were going. And I'm just like swinging and shooting and doing this and doing that. And I'm like, whoa, wait, I thought the game was over. Why am I able to still play the game when the credits are going? Wow, this is awesome. I love this. And I'm just swinging and swinging and swinging and swinging. And then the Hell Vanguard shows up. I'm like, what are you doing here? And I'm swinging and swinging and swinging and shooting. And um, I got treated to like the other little bonus cutscene, the one that plays after like the actual end of the game where Virgil was like oh I'm gonna fight Munus and win haha -ha. uh, that happened and then that was like it for my initial Devil May Cry 3 experience and that was really fun after I beat Virgil and after the credits finished I let out the biggest biggest sigh of relief as if I just got done fighting Satan's strongest whatever all day. And and when I say all day, I mean this was genuinely an all-day experience for me and my cousins. But it was over. It was done. And then the game said, oh, hey, you've unlocked hard mode. And that moment, for the first time, I experienced someone saying what I was thinking it was my cousins collectively going, what do you mean there's a hard mode? Well, damn, that took quite a while to get through, both in the video's runtime and how long it took. It This video took two months, and this is just part one out of four. But anyway, I'm happy that I finally finished it at this point. And if you watched it all the way to the end and you're hearing me yap on just the same way they did in my verse video essay, uh, thanks a lot. I appreciate it, and I appreciate you more than you think I do for watching this all the way through. Now, I did say in the beginning that the gameplay featured in this part was going to be really bad on purpose, and so I figured while I do this last little goodbye piece for this part of the video series, I'm going to show you what it actually looks like when I play the game for real as the ending bits. And to my stream audience, um, now that I'm done with this, I am going to get back on the typical YouTube and stream, like, frequency for me. Because, well, I've explained it before, I can't really, and it's just like a me thing, I can't really stream a lot when I'm working on videos like this and my big projects. But, regardless, it's done, I'm done, and I'm not going to start the second part for a good while. But what I do, y'all don't know. So, thanks for uh, watching this to the end. And be treated to how I actually play the game now. Absolutely crazy about it! So